Hey friends, I want to ask you for your help. I want to ask you for something that maybe you could do to get back to the How to Wrench channel. And uh, I'm sure with all the motorcyclists we have on here, many of you have seen, excuse me, the contest going around by OCC about build your own chopper and, and getting to work on a, a bike build with them. So I, uh, I signed up, I'm super excited. We've had a ton of votes. Uh, last I saw I was in seventh place. Uh, they cut down to 15. I think at two days and then I'm really not sure what they do from there but it's crazy how the comments have been on social media there's a lot of hate and a lot of a lot of good whatnot whether you like it or not and and my whole thing is is I think that you know how to wrench myself we're always gonna step into an environment and try and make it the most positive experience possible and uh, and we're always going to learn. There's always going to be something there. I've been following uh, following a lot lately because this contest is genius marketing on one level, that's for sure. But it'd be great exposure. It'd be a great opportunity. I think there's a lot of people on this channel that believe that How to Wrench makes an impact in the world of education, especially gaining and choosing to follow a tech path or whatnot. So uh, there's you know a couple of people I've been trying to hook up with for a couple of years, more than a couple of years, really. Mike Rose, one of them, uh, from the Pay It Forward movement and uh, uh, just everything he does it's freaking amazing like can't believe it but uh, this deal seems really cool and I think it's a great opportunity for uh, for Hot Wrench really uh, to get in there and like just said make a difference and, and do something cool plus build a bike uh, but I thought maybe I'd walk around the shop. I just got back from uh, Alabama with uh, seeing my family down there and I saw some really cool stuff because a lot of you uh, may not know uh, that in the past I've been a bike builder and you know me for like turning wrenches and skill sets and whatnot so I found some stuff down at my aunt's house that my mom had and she had and I thought I'd share some of that with you right now so I think it's pretty cool stuff you probably didn't know this about me because I look like a ridiculously boring white guy from the Midwest that probably eats corn and rides uh, bicycles around I don't know maybe not bicycles I'd be a little bit healthier but check this out I have done a couple cool things with other cool people, mind you. I will say that I've never been able to claim anything completely on my own, surround myself with great people, and check out some of the things we've done. I literally am so fresh from this trip, I haven't even hung some of this stuff up. But this is my old business partner, Clay Jensen, freaking rock star. One of the few people I would ever, ever ride a bike on that he worked on. Matter of fact, him and I won a number one plate. I got my old race body back on my uh, for my... TL 1000 that we got the uh, the number one plate on. Uh, it's a hot mess. I'm gonna hang it up. I've showed you that one before, but this thing, gosh dang, that brings back memory. Let me show you a couple of other things. Fun picture that somebody had made of my mom. Sure miss her. She was awesome. She taught me how to ride. Got me my first motorcycle when I was 14. She rode. Oh, one cool lady. Okay. Back to the air fun stuff. So, what this was is we were featured in a local newspaper, and this is where it really all started for me when I came up this crazy, nutso job uh, idea uh, for our shop to start doing classes on how to build a chopper. I know, I know. You look at that guy and think that's not a chopper guy, but uh, we were seeing a lot of dangerous stuff out there. Uh, and it, what's funny about this whole contest is that Orange County Choppers. I really give credit. For have like literally revolutionized the the chopper movement i mean between west coast choppers and orange county choppers just those in the in the discovery channel i mean there's a lot of people i'm sure to give credit but it was like genius marketing well we were seeing a lot of stuff where people were going to get hurt they i mean they were going to get killed uh super super dangerous uh stuff coming loose and not understanding things and i came up with this crazy idea and if you historically look at it in the first shop ever who gave classes and literally taught someone how to build a chopper from beginning to end. We literally started with a frame. Like, here's a cool picture of a couple of the students. We even had female students. We had mother, or excuse me, father sons. We had uh, father daughters. Uh, she took it by herself, just some other students in the background. And uh, obviously, we built some cool bikes, but probably. The biggest story that that turned into, and why I think I've got some ability to, ooh, why I think I've got some ability to run around with the OCC guys. That same fellow in the in the picture there, Clay Jensen. We, uh, along with this this dude named Terry, 
uh, and then the painter, Brian, uh, we all worked on this and built the spike, and we actually won Sturgis. We were a couple crazy farm guys that showed up, won Sturgis, and this was the issue of Street Chopper that we were featured in. Pretty stinking cool. Now, I'm not personally into theme bikes, uh, but I understand all the engineering and everything that goes into it. And so a lot of people are like, oh, would you build a hot wrench bike? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I just, I like some really like pure and raw details, but I don't know. But this bike, uh, it's just freaking, it was crazy cool. It's a long story, but the wheels are probably what really won us the contest, I think, because at Sturgis, uh, the rear wheel was actually a working roulette table. You could actually play block to block. It's pretty wild. Um, here is that uh, issue, a street chopper in our Sturgis tag that year. Can't believe it, it's way cool. But what's really neat is the belt. This belt, we were really unique in the fact that the painter, um, the guy that did this, Kelly was his name, he, his whole family is brilliant. They're just like artists. And you see all these dice? So you think, oh yeah, okay, gambling bike, big deal, right? No joke, we had figured out a way to lire up a Karyok and uh, LED light that just came out that year. And I could tell you all the secrets, but basically when this bike was running, this looked like a cartoon book where you're flipping through the cartoon pages and someone's running down the road. It was dice rolling down the craps table. I mean, unheard of. Well, I have it is eventually one of the owners, the guy that won it from the casino, uh, the front pulley uh, came off when they put a big smacking 124 inch motor in there and uh belt got shredded so they gave it to me it's a bummer if you think you're ever going to ride a chopper and not work on it you got another thing coming i'm going to tell you that right now so there's just some fun uh memories uh trip down memory lane if you will that just cracks me up and oh i know i was going to show you one other thing let's see if i can find it what do i do with that thing Okay, I found it. Here was uh, my last chopper. This is one I built for me. And this was a really cool, fun project because I built it with a bunch of students at the college uh, tech program I taught at. And it was literally, uh, the coolest story was about the engine because the engine cases were given to me, my good friend Dave Sick. And uh, I'm going to tag him in this video too. And uh, Dave, they, it was basically a bike that was caught, the, the motor was in a bike that was caught in a garage fire. And the bike didn't catch on fire, but it was so intensely hot that the engine uh, basically melted where it actually dripped down material from the heads, ran through the push tubes, and actually ended up in the bottom of the case. So it was crazy. So we were like, oh, I wonder if they're any good. So I did is we bought, especially being on a low budget, we bought all used parts, uh, takeoff parts off Harley-Davidson motorcycles and uh, built the bike. And I remember the students' faces the first time it rang. So they're like, oh my goodness, this thing's full of eBay parts. And uh, fired it up and it was awesome. So year one, we made it an 88. Year two, we made a 95. And year three, we made it a 107, which at that time, everybody said you couldn't do it. They were like, no, it can't be done. You have to bore the cases and do all this sort of stuff. No, -uh, we made it work. Uh, long story, it's cool. There's an entire like build, uh, uh, story of this on my Facebook page where you can actually see all the photos. I'll drop a couple of them in here just so you could see them and at least one of the finished bike. But uh, it was cool. I loved this bike. I loved the look of it. I loved riding it. Uh, this was thing. I mean, I put touring bags on there and everything we ever built, including that uh, that chopper that was in Street Chopper there. All the bikes we ever built, Clay and I did, we built them to ride. So, I mean, they had like welded in oil drains i remember when clay did that and i was like thought he was just a genius because harley's back then you just pull a rubber hose off and dump it all over the pre-twin cam world right and we were we were doing neat stuff because i just had awesome people in my life I run through a couple of photos of uh, the Sierra build. This is probably one of my all-time favorites. One of my students took this, and uh, we were laughing how fifteen thousand dollars worth of parts was sitting on uh, probably a five hundred dollar truck, if if that, with uh, the tailgate straps about ready to pop. Yeah, crazy fun days. Here we were taking some pictures of the Stroker crank and uh, uh, Revolution pistons, but uh, super fun engine build. And then uh, here we are breaking it in on the dyno and uh, checking things out. This thing is stupid fast. After she was broke in, I think the highest number I ever saw was 117 foot pounds of torque. So fun motor to bounce around on. The thing I loved about this bike is I built it with Air Ride, hit the pump and everything back in the uh, 
in the fender well, but you could drop it at a gas station, so it looked pretty sick, but it was really comfortable to ride when you pumped it up. I can't tell you how much I miss working with the students. I mean, it just was such a, an exciting day every day to uh, pass on these skill sets and a lot of times learn myself uh, as I was going along, but what, uh, what an adventure it was. I'm going to let Sierra just show off and show her little sexy self right here. That was one good looking fun bike. Let's see. This was, oh, this picture's crazy looking at it because there's the bike, there's the helmet, there's the body. Back there, behind there's the leathers. It's the only stuff I really kept because that day I crashed and was in that coma. You may have seen that in another video. Maybe I'll see the tire mark. Yeah, there's the tire mark that ran my head over. Anyway. Uh, this photo was taken that day by the ever so famous uh, Brian Nelson. You see him everywhere when it comes to uh, prints. So it's covered up. can't show you. But anyway, awesome. But there is that championship winning TL that I just showed you the body of. And what was awesome about that is this was the year before because you can obviously see I'm so color coordinated. And we... Uh, the Brian's photo actually was in the rule book for the next year, which I have somewhere. But what what a cool deal to, you know, talk about the coolest trophy. Got the number one plate and then also ended up in the yearbook. I love this photo, man, because it reminds me of memories that are pretty sweet. Many of you know that I lost my brother uh, due to suicide. And uh, he had given me this keychain right there. And it's a little hard to tell in the photo there. But what that is is a Two Brothers Racing keychain. So we were big Two Brothers fans. It was awesome. But I mean, I'm getting after it. My John Krasinski helmet. I'm sure Ryan over at uh, Ryan's Road Racing uh, World uh, Garage, I guess, if you will. Uh, that page is so awesome. He probably loved that helmet. And then uh, I love that I'm dragging one finger braking. It's like my few claim to fame there. Uh, through uh, That was turn five at Brainerd. So I'm honking along 100 and some mile an hour. But it's pretty cool. Fun bike. Fun experience. And we came home with the number one plate. And that really comes back to the story of why I'd love it if you'd vote for me. Because if I see an opportunity here to be around awesome people and awesome stuff and awesome technology and, and a cool experience. So I, I'm not going to lie. I would love to have that experience to expose people at that level to how to wrench. Because I think where the future of, of technical learning is going to go is unfortunately more and more programs, especially more so programs, they're, they're just closing up at these colleges, one after another, after another, after another. There's very few surviving ones, especially ones that I think are like rock star ones. There's still some out there. Uh, maybe I should do a video on that in the future. Where could you go get an education? But uh, it, it's just a difficult space. And so these whole discovery shows and channels and whatnot are huge players in, in especially kids getting interested in something going, I'd like to do that. You know, what's the money opportunity in that for me? What is the skill sets? What can I do with that? You know, and I just interviewed a, a student or a student called me for a job reference. Uh, if he could use me on a job reference a couple of days ago, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? What's going on? And he's, you know, still in the more sale industry. And then when I told him what I was doing, that was in drones and aviation. He's like, what? So once again, my platform has always been about getting skill sets. That's why I'm not the most famous YouTuber because I'm not hot. I don't got a bunch of, you know, dumb stuff on here. I have stuff that's kind of boring. You know, how to use a torque wrench the right way, how to build this motor the right way, how to do this and this and this. So I think that we could definitely make a difference, make a cool impact on that show uh, that would inspire a lot of people. And I think it'd be great to do it together. So that's why I'm asking you to vote for me. I'm going to just get at it. I'm going to quit rambling on here, but I thought you'd enjoy a little bit of the history lesson and me shouting out to you to say, hey, I would love to have your help. I would love to make it into that, and I think that'd be a great way for you all to say thanks uh, for all the free content that's on here. So anyway, make it a great day as always. I hope to hear from you, and I hope you stay connected, and uh, we'll see you at the next video.